Hello, and welcome to this Learn English Elementary recording, brought to you by the British Council. To find out more and to access language activities and audio scripts, visit our Learn English website at www.britishcouncil.org/learnenglish. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Learn English Elementary podcast. It's series two. This is podcast number six, and I'm Tess. Good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening. <laughs> I'm Ravi, and we're your presenter. Ah! Ravi, what's up? Are you okay? Ah,、uh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I'm okay. What's up? Oh, it's all right. I've really hurt my leg, just there. When I do that, it really hurts. Ah! Well, don't do it again, silly. What have you done? I think it was playing football on Saturday. It was okay after the match. Well, it hurt a bit, but it's getting worse. I think. <sighs> have you been to the doctors? What? Uh, no. No. It'll be okay in a couple of days, I'm sure. <sighs> Ravi, if it's really hurting you, you have. To go to the doctor, can you walk okay? Yes, Tess, it's fine. I can walk okay as long as I don't do this. Ah!、Oh, don't be so silly, Ravi. It might be something serious. Go to the doctor's after we finish the podcast, okay? I'm sure it's nothing serious, but okay. I'll give you a lift if you want. Thanks, Tess. It's okay though. It's no problem. I'll give you a lift. It won't take long. Thanks, Tess. Tess. Yes. Could you get me a glass of water? My leg, you know. Don't push your luck, Ravi. Shall we get on with the podcast, and then I'll take you to the doctor's if I still feel like it. <laughs> okay then. If you've heard us before, listeners, you'll know what we have for you. As usual, we've got our quiz. Natalie's going to play this week. There's your turn when we hear what some of you think about a big question. Um, what else? Oh, Carolina. It should be a good Carolina today. She's at the hairdressers, apparently. Oh, that's really difficult. Going to the hairdresser in a foreign language. I had my hair cut once in France. It was a disaster. I didn't know you spoke French. Exactly. Huh. <laughs> right. Oh. I've got a great joke for you today.、Mm. But first of all, as usual, we'll start with "I'd like to talk about." Okay, this is the part of our show when someone tells us about something important to them—a hobby, a person, a place, a thing, anything that they're interested in. Yes, anything that you know a bit about and would like to share with all of us. And today we've got Stephen here in the studio. Hi, Stephen. Steve. Okay, Steve. So, where are you from, Steve? I'm from Essex, from a small village on the coast. But I've lived in London for a few years now. And what do you do here in London? Study? No, I finished my course. It was in mathematics, but actually, I'm a DJ now. A DJ? Wow, a professional DJ. You don't have another job? Well, no. I make enough money DJing to live. Not always in the clubs, of course, but I do some parties, you know, weddings, birthdays, that sort of thing.、Hmm. Yeah, I don't need to do anything else. And what do you want to talk about, Steve? Music? No, I'm going to talk about Zaha Hadid. Ah, interesting. She's an architect, isn't she? Yeah, that's right. A really cool architect. Her buildings are fantastic. Do you know much about her? No, not really. But I know the name. Is she British? She was born in Iraq, in Baghdad, but she's lived in London for a long time. I'm not sure if she's got British nationality. She was the first woman ever to win the Pritzker Prize in 2004.、Oh. That's the biggest prize in architecture, like the Nobel Prize, and it's pretty amazing for a woman to win it. Architecture is still a man's world, really. Yeah, I bet. She says that she wanted to be an architect when her father took her to Sumer. In the south of Iraq, when she was a kid, and of course, Sumer was where the first cities were ever built thousands of years ago. The oldest architecture in the world. 
You studied maths and now you're a DJ. What's the interest in architecture? Well, I'm not really into all architecture, but there's something about Zahar Hadid that I love. She's a very, well, intellectual architect.、Mm. She studied maths too. She's got a maths degree and her buildings are so complicated. I'm really interested in technology. And nowadays, well, you can draw something crazy on a piece of paper. And now we've got the technology to actually build it. Anything's possible. <laughs> you should look at her design for the dancing towers. Dancing towers? <laughs> Great name. Yeah. It's going to be built in Dubai. Or, anyway, I hope it's going to be built in Dubai. <laughs> it's a really crazy building. It's really organic, you know? It looks like a plant or something. Wow. And I think my favourite is the one she's doing in Abu Dhabi, the Performing Arts Centre. It's going to be beautiful. It's all round shapes, just like nature. Really beautiful. She must be a busy woman. Well, a few years ago, people said that her buildings were just not practical. They were too complicated and expensive to build. But now, as I said, anything's possible. She's got buildings and projects all over the world North America, Asia, Europe, you name it. Yeah, her designs are expensive to build. But she does other things too. Like what? She designs all sorts of things furniture, things for the home, handbags, shoes. Oh, I'd like to see a pair of Zaha Hadid shoes. <laughs> they're fantastic. They're made of plastic, so they're soft. They kind of move to the shape of your foot, and of course, they can be recycled. And her stuff isn't too expensive either. How old is she? <laughs> you shouldn't ask a woman's age, Ravi. <laughs> But seriously, I'm not sure. In her 50s? Well, thanks for that, Steve. We really must get some pictures of her buildings up on the website, especially the ones that you talked about. I want to see the dancing towers. And the shoes. I want to see the shoes. <laughs> sure. I'll give you some links. There's loads of stuff. <laughs> that would be great. Thanks again and bye. 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 Do you think she does men's shoes? I don't know, Ravi. Interested? You bet. Imagine telling people your shoes were designed by a famous architect. Cool or what? Oh, you're such a fashion victim, Ravi. I know, I know. But really, remember to put those sites up on our blog. I really want to see the shoes. OK, I will, I will. And if you're listening, why don't you tell us what you think about architecture or what you'd like to tell us about? You can write something or record something in audio or video and send it to us at learnenglishpodcast at britishcouncil.org. That's learnenglishpodcast, all one word, at britishcouncil, all one word, dot org. That's O R G. Send it to us and we'll put the most interesting ones on the site. Right, that's that. Now it's quiz time, so let me introduce Natalie. Natalie? Hi, Tess. Hi, Natalie. Where are you calling from? I'm in Buxton. Oh, in the Peak District. You know, I've never been to Buxton. It's daft because it's quite close to Manchester, really. Oh, I'm Ravi, by the way. Hi, Ravi. So, is it nice, Buxton? Well, it's a bit quiet for me, but yeah, the countryside's nice. Yeah, I've heard that. It's a spa town, isn't it? People go there to drink the water and get better when they're ill, right? Well, it was a long time ago. Not really anymore. Maybe you can go there for your leg, Ravi. That's not how it works, Tess. Anyway, Natalie, what do you do? Not much, really. I'm having a year out before I go to university. A gap year? Yeah. I thought people usually went abroad or travelled round the world in their gap year. Well, I want to go travelling, but I need to get some money together first. OK, a y well, good luck with that. And good luck with our quiz. Are you ready to play? Yep. OK, then. We're going to try a new one this time. How's your general knowledge, Natalie? Um, it's OK, I suppose. Because the quiz this time is a comparatives quiz. I'm going to ask you five questions. All you have to do is choose the right answer. OK. a y I'll give you an example. What's bigger, a cow or a sheep? 
A, a cow. Right. That was an easy one. The real questions are a bit tougher than that. Shall we start? Okay then. First question then. What's longer, the River Nile or the Yangtze River? Uh, oh God, I don't know.、Um, the Yangtze. The Nile. Number two. Which has more people, Russia or Canada? It must be Russia.、Um, Russia. Yes, Russia. Number three. Which is taller, the Empire State Building in New York or the Petronas Towers in Kuala Lumpur? Um, I think that must be the second one, the Petro. Petronas, yes, two out of three. Number four. Which is further north, London or Moscow? Um, Moscow, I think. That's right. Three out of four. Last one now. Which can run faster, a horse or an elephant? Oh, is it a trick question? I'm going to say elephant. No, it was horse. Elephants are faster than you think, but they're not that fast. Three out of five, Natalie. Not bad. Yeah. Thanks for playing, though. We'll send you some bits and pieces very soon. Yep. Bye, Natalie. Bye. Okay, we'll have a little break, but don't go away. We've got your turn, and we've got Carolina straight after this. Right, time for your turn. This is when we ask some of our listeners to tell us what they think. Now, in the last podcast, we heard Carolina take a jacket back to a shop because the zip was broken. So. For this time's your turn, we ask you: Do you complain when you get bad service? For example, in a restaurant or in a shop when something is wrong, do you complain or just keep quiet? Let's hear what people said. If I get bad service in a restaurant or a shop, I often get angry, but I rarely complain because I don't like getting into situations where I might. I'll have an argument with somebody. Usually, if I have a bad service experience, I just don't go back to the same restaurant or the same shop in the future. I complain if I get bad service when the service is rude or unfriendly, but when the service is just bad or slow in general, I usually find it quite funny and I don't really complain. I might never go back to the restaurant again, but. Unless the person is actually rude to me, I don't really bother about it. Always, <laughs> because I hate having bad service, and people should be told when they're not doing their job properly. Um, I don't complain. I don't shout or get angry, but I probably I'll make a noise to show that I'm waiting. I'll clear my throat or I'll say excuse me, but I, I won't get really angry. I won't complain as such.、Uh, th yeah, this is a new thing for me, especially being British. We're not very good at complaining,、uh, but since I've lived in Italy, I've become braver. And yes, I don't hesitate now to complain. What about you, Tess? I bet you complain if you get bad service. You know me, Ravi. Hmm. Right. <laughs> What about you, listeners? Do you complain when you get bad service? Write in and let us know, and we'll put the best ones on the website. Okay, let's go straight to Carolina. Remember that Carolina is a student from Venezuela who's come to England to study at university in Newcastle. We've been following her on the podcast, and today she's with her best friend Emily, and they're going to the hairdressers. Let's see how they get on. Good morning. Good morning. I've got an appointment for eleven thirty. My name's Emily Granger, and I'm Carolina Del Barco. Eleven thirty-two. Emily Granger. Er,、uh, cut and colour. Is that right? Yes. I'm having low lights. Have you been here before? No. It's the first time. And Carolina Del Barco. Cut no colour. That's right. Just a cut. 
Just take a seat for a few minutes, please. Okay. okay. <laughs> what did you ask for, Emily? Low lights? What's that? Mm, low lights are like highlights, but a different colour. What? Highlights are blonde. You know, little blonde bits in your hair. And low lights are any other colour, like red or brown. Just little bits of colour. Okay. Oh dear. I'm a bit nervous. I hope I understand what they say to me. I don't know the vocabulary for hair and hairdressers. <laughs> well, what do you want? A new style? Oh no. I want to keep it the same, just a bit shorter. So you say you just want a trim? A trim? Mm-hmm. A trim. I want a trim. I just want a trim, please. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> How's Jamie? He's okay. Why? Well, he used to come round all the time to see you. But recently, well, I haven't seen him. You used to be together all the time. Is everything okay? Yes, it's fine. Oh, I don't know, Emily. I mean, I really like Jamie. And I think, well, that he really likes me. Or I thought. But recently, well, he's always busy. Hmm. I know he's got other friends, of course. But I didn't see him at all last week. Hmm. Perhaps he's studying. Hmm. Emily Granger? Mm-hmm. Hi. Are you ready? Hmm. I'll start your colour first. Then I'll come back to cut your hair, Mr. Barkle. Oh, here we go. Wish me luck. And if you'd like to come with me now, I'll wash your hair. Oh, yes. Okay. Right. Comfortable? Mm. Now, what can I do for you today? I just want a trim, please. Okay. How much do you want off? Want off. How much hair shall I cut off? Half an inch? An inch? Two inches? Oh, um... About an inch, I think. Hmm. Your hair's very thick. Oh, is that bad? <laughs> no, you've just got a lot of hair. <laughs> Isn't it a bit difficult to control? Well, yes, sometimes. What about a few layers? Layers? Oh, I'm sorry, my English isn't very good. I can cut some bits of it shorter, so it isn't all the same. We call them layers. Maybe just a few, here and here. Well, OK, then. And what about the fringe? The fringe? I'm sorry. <laughs> this bit here, the part above your eyes. Do you want it long or short? Um, quite long, please. Just cut a little bit off, not too much. Right. So, where are you from, then? Venezuela. Venezuela? Mm. Oh. I've got a friend who went to Venezuela once. He said it was lovely. I can't remember where he went. On the coast somewhere, I think? Oh, yes. The coast is lovely. Mm. And how are you enjoying Newcastle? I like it. <laughs> Not too cold for you? <laughs> well, yes. It's a bit cold. Colder than Venezuela, anyway. But I'm getting used to it. <laughs> Made a lot of friends? Oh, yes. Some. I share a flat with some people. Whereabouts? At the university. Ah, you're a student. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Oh, just bend your head forward a bit, please. Sorry? Just put your head forward, uh, down, l like this. I want to cut the back. Oh. <laughs> so what are your plans for the holiday? Going back to Venezuela? Or staying here? Oh, I'm going away somewhere, but I'm not sure yet. Right. There you are. Oh. I'll just get a mirror and show you the back. Mm. Mm? Okay? Yes, it's lovely. Thank you very much. Good. Are you going to wait for your friend? I think so. How long is she going to be? Mm, about half an hour. Oh, OK. Yes, I'll wait. Thank you very much. Come on, let's get out of here. Quick. OK. Oh. What's the matter? Look at me! It looks nice. It's a bit short, but... Uh... A bit short? 
I look like a... I don't know... A baby bird! <laughs> no, you don't. It looks nice. And anyway, it'll soon grow. <sighs> it'll soon grow? That's okay, then. I'll wear a paper bag on my head for a month. Well, you could wear a hat. Or a scarf. <sighs> Do you know what, Carolina? You're not helping. Oh. Oh, come on. Let's go home. Poor Emily. A disaster at the hairdressers. Like that time in France for me. Has that ever happened to you, Ravi? No, thank goodness. But there was once when I was a kid and my mum cut my hair at home. It looked awful. Oh. I didn't want to leave the house, but she made me go to school and all the other kids laughed at me. It was horrible. Oh, poor thing. I know. Ah! ah. Your leg again? Uh-huh. Come on, then. Let's finish off here and I'll take you to the doctor's. OK. Oh, hang on, though. I've got a joke for you. Oh, typical. Come on, then. Uh, so, there's a man and he's lost in the desert. <laughs> lost in the desert? Yeah. His plane crashed or something in the desert and he hasn't got any water. So he's walking and walking and he's really thirsty. After a while, he meets a man who's selling ties. Ties? Yes, Tess. Ties. The things that men wear round their necks. So this man has got hundreds of ties. Mm -hmm. Black ones, pink ones, striped ones. Do you want to buy a tie, sir? Lovely ties. Very cheap. So the man, who's lost, says, No, I don't want a tie. I want water. Sorry, sir. No water. Only ties. <laughs> so the man walks on in the desert, and he's getting more and more thirsty. Then he meets another man. Want to buy a tie, sir? Lovely ties. Special price for you, sir. And he says, No, I don't want a tie. I want water. Sorry, sir, no water, but very beautiful ties. So he walks on again. Mm. It's very hot, and he's really desperate for water now. And he sees another man. Give me water. No water, sir, but beautiful ties. <laughs> Pink ones, red ones, striped ones, very good price. So the poor man walks on, and then, right in front of him, he sees a beautiful, luxury hotel in the middle of the desert. He thinks he must be imagining things, but no, it really is a hotel. He goes up to the door, crying with happiness, and the man at the door of the hotel says, Sorry, sir, you can't come in here if you aren't wearing a tie. Oh. What? It's funny! Let's just say it isn't one of your best, Ravi. Well, I thought it was. Ah! Ah! Oh, come on then. Let's get you to the doctor. Oh. OK, everyone. Thanks for listening. Remember that if you want to send us anything, you can send it to learnenglishpodcast at britishcouncil.org. Tom, the teacher, will be here in a moment, so don't go away. But it's goodbye from me and Ravi. See you next time. Bye. Ah! You are listening to a Learn English elementary recording brought to you by the British Council. To find out more and to access language activities and audio scripts, visit our Learn English website at www.britishcouncil.org forward slash learn English. Hi, I'm Tom. I'm here at the end of every podcast to talk about some of the language you heard in the programme and to talk about ways to help you learn English. Today, I want to talk about how we compare things in English. I'm sure that you know that we often use more to compare things. We can say, a car is more expensive than a bicycle, or a book is more interesting than a film. But we don't always use more. Do you remember the quiz? It was all about comparing things. Listen to Tess explaining the quiz to Natalie. What question does she ask? I'm going to ask you five questions. All you have to do is choose the right answer. OK. I'll give you an example. What's bigger, a cow or a sheep? <laughs> a, a cow? Yes. The question was, what's bigger, 
a cow or a sheep. But Tess doesn't use more. We don't use more with short adjectives, words like hot, cold, big or small, adjectives that only have one syllable. We add er to the end of the adjective to make the comparative form. So Tess says, what's bigger, a cow or a sheep? Listen to another question. What's longer, the River Nile or the Yangtze River? Uh, oh, God, I don't know. Um, the Yangtze? Did you hear? What's longer, the River Nile or the Yangtze River? The adjective long only has one syllable, long. So the comparative form of long is longer. Listen to one more example. Number three. Which is taller, the Empire State Building in New York or the Petronas Towers in Kuala Lumpur? Um, I think that must be the second one, the Petro. Petronas, yes. Yes, which is taller, the Empire State Building or the Petronas Towers? The comparative form of tall is taller. Big, bigger, long, longer, tall, taller. Easy, isn't it? But some short adjectives are irregular. They don't follow the normal rules. Listen to another question from the quiz. What's the comparative form of far? Patronus, yes, two out of three. Number four. Which is further north, London or Moscow? Um, Moscow, I think. That's right. Which is further north, London or Moscow? This one is a bit different. The comparative form of far is further. Some people say farther. You'll hear both. Further and farther are both comparative forms of far. Now listen to Tess and Ravi talking about his bad leg. What's the comparative form of bad? What have you done? I think it was playing football on Saturday. It was OK after the match. Well, it hurt a bit, but it's getting worse, I think. That's right. Ravi says his leg is getting worse. The comparative form of bad is worse. We don't add ER at all. We change the word completely. Worse. And good is irregular too. The comparative form of good is better. Now, let's look at how we use a comparative form in a sentence. Listen to Carolina talking to the hairdresser. She compares Newcastle with Venezuela. What does she say? And how are you enjoying Newcastle? I like it. <laughs> Not too cold for you. <laughs> well, yes, it's a bit cold. Colder than Venezuela, anyway. She says that Newcastle is colder than Venezuela. Colder than. We use than to compare things. So we can say, a cow is bigger than a sheep. Or, the River Nile is longer than the Yangtze. Ravi's leg is worse now than it was this morning. Try to notice comparative forms in the English that you hear and read this week. Now let's talk about telling the time in English. You probably learnt to say, it's four o'clock, or it's half past six. Yes, that's how we tell the time in English. But British people don't always say that. Listen to Emily at the hairdressers. What time is her appointment? Good morning. Good morning. I've got an appointment for 11.30. My name's Emily Granger. She says 11.30. 11.30 is exactly the same as half past 11. You can say, my train leaves at half past two, or my train leaves at 2.30. It's the same. It's the same for all the other times, too. You can say quarter past three or 3.15. You can say 
25 past 6 or 6.25, and quarter to 4 or 3.45. Sometimes 3.45 is easier for learners than quarter to 4, so don't be afraid to say it. British people do. Now, last time I talked about practising what you're going to say in English before you say it. Do you remember? It's a good idea. Carolina practised what she was going to say when she took her jacket back to the shop. She does the same thing this time at the hairdresser's. Listen. Well, what do you want? A new style? Oh, no. I want to keep it the same, just a bit shorter. So you say you just want a trim? A trim? Mm-hmm. A trim. I want a trim. I just want a trim, please. <laughs> she practices, I just want a trim, please. And she says it to the hairdresser. But listen to what happens next. Now, what can I do for you today? I just want a trim, please. OK. How much do you want off? Want off. How much hair shall I cut off? Half an inch? An inch? Two inches? Hmm. She says, I just want a trim, please, beautifully. But then she doesn't understand what the hairdresser says next. This can happen when you're speaking English. Listen again. What does Carolina do to show that she doesn't understand? OK. How much do you want off? Want off. How much hair shall I cut off? Half an inch? An inch? Two inches? That's right. She just repeats the words that she doesn't understand as a question. Want off? And the hairdresser explains. She does the same thing several times at the hairdresser's. Listen. What about a few layers? Layers? Oh, I'm sorry. My English isn't very good. And again. And what about the fringe? The fringe? I'm sorry. So that's what you can do when you don't understand a word or a phrase. Repeat it as a question. Now let's look at a word that you can use this week. The hairdresser asks Carolina where she lives, but he doesn't use the word where. Listen, what does he use? I share a flat with some people. Whereabouts? At the university. He says, whereabouts? He doesn't want to know exactly where she lives. He doesn't want to know her address. We use whereabouts when we want to ask more or less where. In what area of the city, for example. So, if someone says, I live in London, you can say, oh really, whereabouts? Try to use whereabouts this week. OK, I'm going to stop there. I'll talk to you all again next time. Remember, you can write to me about any language that you noticed in this podcast. The address is learnenglishpodcast at britishcouncil.org. In a moment, you'll hear the address for the website where you can read everything you've heard in this podcast. You can also find some practice exercises to do online and a support pack that you can print. Right, that's all for this time. Bye for now. See you next time. This recording was brought to you by the British Council. If you enjoyed this elementary podcast, you might like to listen to previous episodes. You can also listen to our other Learn English podcasts, such as Themes, Stories and Poems, and professional English. You can access these on our website at www.britishcouncil.org forward slash learn English.